I was lied to, guys. Tricked. Bamboozled. I am so upset. I am so upset. I was supposed to do my first book review on the book that I loved, which was The Discovery of Witches. And then one of my friends, who shall not be named for their own safety, was just like, you should read this book. It's like Pride and Prejudice, but the genders are reversed. And I was like, I like that. I love Pride and Prejudice. Let me go read this book. Three days. I spent three days reading this book and I want to scream. <sighs> I was tricked. What are we gonna do? I can't get out of my feelings right now. <laughs> Come on, let's get away. Hey, 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 hey. Let us get away, let us, let us get away, let us, let us get away. Hey, let's get away. Hey guys, welcome back. I am JJ McAvoy. If you don't know me, I am a best-selling romantic novelist and now a YouTuber. And I want to talk about all things romantic. Do you like my new layout? I've been trying to figure out where to position my camera. I might move back, might move forward. We're working on it. It's a work in progress. Anyway, today I want to be doing a book review on the book Far From a Madden Crowd which is by Thomas Hardy. He was a Victorian poet and writer. Uh, this book came out in like 9 1874, so it's like a classical piece of work. And I've heard about it from several different people throughout my career in literature, uh, whether it was in school, whether it was just like looking through ca classical works. And we know the Bronte sisters and we know Jane Austen, but it's just like, Sometimes I like to go back into like the Victorian era and sometimes I should not do that because it makes me upset. <laughs> My friend, bless her heart, bless her heart, was just like, you should read this book. It's like Pride and Prejudice, but in reverse. And like I said in the intro, I was completely, totally into that. I was just like, oh, this is cool. I, I love to see women in a higher status with money, with all the means. And then I remembered it was by a male author. And I was just like, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Not that male authors can't write females, even though if you look on like, um, I think a hashtag on Twitter where it's like men writing women, <laughs> you'll get a laugh. Um, it's just, Especially in that era, there was a lot of preconceived notions about women and sometimes they just end up destroying their female characters. So I should probably give you a summary of this book so you understand where I'm coming from. Far From a Madding Crowd is a book about Bathsheba Everdeen. Ever done? Ever Dean, yes. Like I, when I first read the name, I couldn't stop thinking of the Hunger Games, but I let it go as I was reading. The first name also was a doozy, Bathsheba. And that should have been my first warning. Naming your female character of the wife of King David in the Bible should have been my warning here. There were signs, there were clear signs that I was not gonna like where this train stopped, but I kept going. So anyway, Bathsheba is living inside the countryside in a rural farming community in England. And I actually liked the, in, the information about the life of farmers during that era, because even though you know that how big of a deal it was to own land and have your own animals and how your livelihood was like connected to basically your livestock in your land reading the tragedies and all the things that happened to people because of it was actually very interesting and i liked that part of the book so let me start with things that i liked that was it i liked learning about all the other people and then i got to the character again that shiva so Bathsheba is basically living in the countryside with her aunt 
and it's kind of like a middle class society everyone's a farmer everyone owns land everyone's basically working their own land with help and i actually like that part of the book like seeing how rural communities outside of central england lived during that period was fascinating to me just in general and it also gave us a good sense of just how difficult it was to live and i think sometimes we romanticize the past actually all the time we romanticize the past but it was just showing just how one little thing could spark a whole entire series of events like your barn burning down losing an animal like those are all your assets so like if one thing happens to them they get sick or something you are you could be destitute so i enjoyed that let me talk about the things i enjoyed and that was one of the things just reading about that community it was fun to read um Bathsheba has a neighbor Gabriel and he and her basically spend a lot of time together and Gabriel starts to fall in love with her and he's like I have a hundred acres of land and all these sheep you'll live a nice life marry me and she's just like no thank you and her reason is because she wants to be independent and she just doesn't feel like she'd be a good wife and she wants to enjoy her life more and i respect it if that's how you feel that's how you feel i respect it and gabriel being a sweetheart i i felt bad for him but i was just like i understand this is a sucky moment for you but she wants to be independent and i really like that he respected her and respected that decision but then tragedy strikes to Gabriel and he's kind of like loses his money and his livelihood. Um, I'm trying not to spoil the book, but I feel like I have to spoil it a little bit. Forgive me, but it's been like however many years. So um, what was interesting is in Pride and Prejudice, which is how I got myself in this mess anyway, it's it was a difference in class. And when you meet Gabriel and Bathsheba, they're basically on the same level. And if you kind of think of it, he would probably he would probably have more than her in that and when they first met because he's a landowner, he's a farmer, and she's basically just living with her aunt and helping her work her aunt's own little farm. Um but then she rejects Gabriel and tragedy strikes and she's but she has already moved back to I think back to England or some other farm because she gains it in her inheritance um she then comes into a large sum of money and she's now mistress of a manor and her own farm and Gabriel ends up going to due to certain circumstances I'm trying not to spoil all of it he ends up going and being her shepherd inside her new estate and that's when you see the class difference change and shift so he's now basically her servant and she's now the mistress of a house um i was still thinking oh they're going to still fall in love and it's still going to be beautiful wrong because the author throws in a secondary character um mr baldwood and he's like an older gentleman I think in the book he's about 40 and for some reason that doesn't seem old old to me but he he's like an older gentleman with a large amount of land like a thousand acres of land and he's the most eligible bachelor inside the whole entire community and he basically takes a liking to Bathsheba and Bathsheba out of nowhere in her character just decides to send him a balance day card to mess with him i don't know i think she just thinks he's like a pomp not pompous but he's very stout and very strong in demeanor and she he he catches her interest but she's not like falling in love with him or anything but she decides to send him a valentine's note and of course mr baldwin or baldwood he <laughs> of course mr baldwood would basically think this is his moment that he likes her and then she likes him back and he proposes to her she rejects him a second time she rejects him so that's two proposals she's rejected and i'm still like 
she doesn't want to get married. That is okay. I'm liking that we're not demonizing this woman for not wanting to get married. It's fine. She's all about being an independent woman wanting to basically prove that she can own a farm while all the other men are like, you can't do it. You can't do it. You're just a silly girl. Still liking the book at this point. Still thinking everything is good. Still rooting for Gabriel in the background, hoping that, and praying he's going to get like some miracle chance or she's going to look overlook that she's a mistress now and status and fall in love with him. Enter guy number three, Tory, a British officer. And I have to say this to all of my British friends that are watching. You guys have done more damage to guys in red coats than all of America combined. I don't know why every time I read an English work of literature and I see a naval or a British officer who has a red coat and I know they're about to do something shady. It happens all the time. All the time. I don't understand. Were they really all that bad? <laughs> anyway... I was just like, this guy's not, he wasn't like Gabriel who was like nice and sweet and hardworking and a farmhand and Mr. Baldwood who was like a little bit awkward and rich, but very stable and caring and wanted to basically give her a great life. Even though all the guys that proposed to her are like, I can provide for you and you don't have to do anything. And she's just like, no, but I want to work and I want to own my land and I want to prove myself. And for some reason, they were very obsessed with giving this woman a piano. But either way, Mr. Tory, the British officer, comes and swoops her off of her feet. How? How does this officer manage to enchant the hard-headed anti-marriage Bathsheba? by showing her his sword in the forest. Well, I don't know if it was a forest, but basically he just shows her his swordsmanship and she's like, ooh, ah, oh, he's so attractive. What does he do? Huh? What? I think it mentions that he comes from like a good family of some, of some sort, but legitimately he's trash, absolute trash. The moment he was introduced, I was like, oh, he's trash. And you know he's trash because of his other past relationships. He's very prideful and unforgiving. And yes, I'll just spoil this little bit. Spoiler. Um, he, has a, he had a girl um, that he was basically madly in love with. And due to a series of events... He doesn't end up marrying that girl. He still loves that girl, but he's just mad at her and refuses to get married, even though it was just all a misunderstanding and he realizes it's a misunderstanding. Instead, all of a sudden, Miss I don't want to get married, I want to be independent, marries the worst guy out of the trio. The worst one. And it drove me mad. Why? I don't understand. I was just like, there is no man's sword that is that <laughs> enticing enough for me to be like, I'm going to ignore all the clear red flags and all the other better men suited for me. And I'm just going to marry you because you look very dashing. I mean, see, I didn't want to blame the author because... I feel like this does happen in real life sometimes, but it's just like reading it, it just felt like Bathsheba completely lost herself. Maybe that's what love does to people. I don't know, but it was upsetting. I was very, very much upset because I'm still, I was still a Ga Gabriel fan. I would have understood Baldwood because again, he was not a bad person. Um, and it was her fault for sending him that Valentine's Day card. And I I just, 
I think I also wrote like a paper of this side note. I wrote a paper in university about how um, classical literature likes to break or destroy or harm strong female characters, whether it's in um, opera or literature, if a female is strong and independent, she's going to get punished for that in some way. And it bothered me so much um, because the punishments were always vast. Um, in this story, I do admit that the guys got punished too, but it's just like their punishment was because Bad Sheba was such a horrible person in the sense that she was stringing these guys along and make it just made her seem like a floozy is that modern english <laughs> i'll say floozy it made her seem like a floozy and it just it was frustrating as the book goes on Bathsheba is now married to mr troy and he exposes himself to be a gambler to be uncaring to be pompous he's trash and she would have known that if she spent more time than that one sword dance but hey um so he ends up meeting someone else and just a whole bunch of series of events happen and it eventually leads to him sort of kind of faking his death and because of that, guess who Bathsheba goes back to? Not Gabriel, not the guy that's watching her ruin herself up and down the street. He's just there tending to the sheep. She goes back to Mr. Baldwood and he's so excited. He doesn't care that she was married previously and she is his love and so it's hard to root against him because again he doesn't seem like a bad character though he does have possessive issues he wanted her even though she was married to someone else but still I think I hated Tori or Troy so bad that I couldn't really see the flaws of anyone else um lo and behold Mr. Tori is not dead I keep saying Tori. I think his name is Troy. Mr. Troy is not dead. And he comes back because he wants to reclaim his place as her husband and master of the house. Which then leads to Baldwin and them getting into it. And both of those men going into ruin. And then after all of that chaos and all of that mess, Gabriel is still beside her and he's just like, and she's at the end she realizes that she wants to be with him sis we could have saved so much time so much time but that's how we get into this whole entire book and i don't know what to say I don't know what to say. Um, this book actually looks super thick, but it's actually large print. I don't know why they printed it like this. I think the book is, itself is only, it's it's not up to 300 pages. But yeah, I just feel like it is definitely Victorian literature. The drama, the past lovers, the chaos of it all. If you like Emma by Jane Austen if you like it's not like Pride and Prejudice but yes if you liked Les Mis the play and you like that much of angst and drama this also might be a good book for you if you don't like that might that much angst and you don't like love squares this is not the book you should be reading. But if you like Victorian literature and if you like going into that time period, this would be a really cool book for you to vent on. Um, if you also prefer to watch it, you can do that. I think a 2015 version of this movie came out or sooner. It might have been. I can't remember the date, but there's a recent movie. That's the cover of this. This is from the movie. Um, and I haven't brought myself to watch it yet because I'm still upset. 
but I will think about watching it. Maybe. I know I like I the landscapes and everything that was discussed. I kind of want to see how that works on cin cinematography. So I might watch it one day when I'm calm and want to be upset. So with that, I shall put this on my bookshelf and hopefully never think about it again. That's a lie. I will think about it repeatedly and it will just be when I'm looking at some other movie. If you want to read it and you want to join me in my screaming, please go ahead. I will be doing another book review soon. I might have a different layout. I don't know. But either way, thank you for letting me rent and I hope that was a good book review, sort of. Either way, I'm really excited to be doing this YouTube journey with all of you and I hope you like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that jazz. Also, I have a book out. It's called The Prince's Bride and part two comes out on November 27th. I truly hope you guys pick up a copy and you let me know what you think of it, if you want me to read it, something. We'll do something. I don't know. I'm really excited to have this book because it is probably my most romantic book yet. Um, I love romance and obviously and to write a book like this where I spent so much time building up the sweetness of the world felt really nice especially if you know me for my darker romantic books it was nice to join the sweet side for a little bit so yes please please buy a copy and let me know what you think i really hope you enjoy it um until then though keep reading romantic love you all bye